Hi, Rob Menard here in the Hazel's Wine Department, and here we go with Sunday specials for February 25th and 26th. John was the first one to pull you down. He took one drink and he started to clown. Passed you the Hazel, Jane and Jack. Penelope got you and passed you right back. We've got four wines to talk about this week. One red, three whites, and we're going to start with the red. We are in Spain for the 2020 Zestos Garnacha Tinto. Red Garnacha might seem obvious. This particular version is coming from smack in the middle of Spain, from that huge wine growing region around Madrid. This is a bright, zesty, super fresh, easy drinking Garnacha. Little on the light side as these reds go, but it's just really gonna pop with this great raspberry, blackberry fruit. Nice little hint of licorice, just a bit of earth sneaking through as well. Touch of pepper, white pepper, black pepper, your call to make. On the palate, very easy drinking, nice fine tannins. This is really quaffable red, nice, easy drinking, approachable style. We're flying up to Chablis now for the 2020 Les Trois Chablis. Chablis, of course, means Chardonnay. So we're getting a good white wine here and we're gonna get so much detail, so much depth for the money in the Chablis, a terrific deal here. Up front, it's gonna open right away with great orchard fruits. Think stone fruit, peach, apricot. I was getting a little bit of a red apple tone. As it continues to unwind and open up in the glass, we're gonna get some nice citrusy notes. I was getting a lovely sort of almost white cherry tone. Beautiful little floral detail that pops up as it gets some air. I was kind of thinking about those lovely wild plum blossoms that come up in the late spring. Little bit of a slightly almost nutty minerality. We see that a lot in Chablis. That's that limestone, that oyster shell character coming through. As always, good Chablis acidity. A nice balanced, very generous style of Chablis at a fantastic price. We're heading to Austria now for two somewhat geeky whites. We're gonna start with the 2020 Johanneshof Rhenish Rotgiffler. Rotgiffler, you might not recognize it. In fact, most of us don't. You will almost certainly not see this grape anywhere outside of Austria. But if you're interested, what you're gonna get here is a really detailed, quite complex and interesting white wine. As with all Austrian whites, great acidity. This is gonna be key. This one's got a nice roundness to it. It's going to open up with a little bit of some lightly chalky minerality, just a little hint of something in almost green. I was thinking more of an herbal note, but as it starts to unwind and the fruit starts to show, we're gonna get into some white peach pear, apple fruits, get a nice citrus tone going as well. As it carries through on the palate, again, that minerality is gonna to start to show up and it's gonna end with an almost salty, I would say slightly green olive note. And don't let that put you off. What that does is it creates a classic Austrian food-friendly table white at a terrific price. Last but not least, we are staying in Austria for one of the classic Austrian white grapes. This is the 2021 Haschen Neumann Gruner Weltliner. Now this is coming from Neusburg, which is in the city limits of Vienna. So this is technically a Vienna or Wien wine. And we're gonna get so much great Gruner Veltliner here. They got good ripeness in this fruit. So although Gruner often has a reputation of being a little bit like Riesling, it does have that Riesling acidity, good Riesling minerality, but it's a bit rounder. It's got a nice fuller texture to it. So again, that's good ripeness in the grapes. For me, when the fruit came on, it really came on and it got almost into a tropical place. I was getting ideas of unripe pineapple, maybe a little bit of guava to go with those classic stone fruits. As with the Rogue Giffler, a little hint of an herbal tone, a little bit of something green, a classic note for Gruner Veltliner. As it finishes on the palate, that great Gruner acidity really asserts itself kind of dries out a bit. You get a little bit of sort of a citrus peel. Again, that tropical thing plays with that. Maybe pomelo, if you will. So much fruit going on in here. So much of those classic detail notes that we see in great Gruner Veltliner. John was the first one to pull you down. He took one drink and he started to clown. Passed you the hazel, Jane and Jack. Penelope got you and passed you right back.